I'm a lawyer, and my mother-in-law invaded my privacy and did something that I seriously might not recover from, let me go ahead and give you a little tiny info before we hop into the story. I have a journal where I write down all my intimate thoughts about my day, my cases, the people that I'm working with, my clients, my defendants, I mean everything. So can you imagine how important it is that I'm the only one that views this? Well, get this. My mother-in-law finds my diary in my room, goes against my privacy, reads it, and she doesn't stop there. She shares it with the most gossip queen person in the neighborhood, Rose. Well, now I'm absolutely done for because I might lose my license for this, but guys, that's not all. Let me tell you the worst of it. Every woman dreams of marrying a wonderful man who loves and cares deeply for her. A dream that starts during puberty and continues into childhood. It's the dream where you feel unquestionably loved and cared for, where you receive unwavering attention and loyalty, you know, and have a partner who becomes a great support system. My mother did not experience all of these things. She had five children from a deadbeat, yet it did not deter her from hoping for the best marriage of, you know, for all her children. When I encountered my partner on a boat cruise shortly after passing the bar exam, he embodied everything that I've ever dreamt of. My ideal partner. When people advise you to dream about finding a great partner, they often forget to mention the importance of having sane in-laws. So let's add that to the wish list because dealing with nosy and crazy in-laws can be incredibly frustrating. Allow me to share my own experience. My husband, John's family, is quite an eccentric bunch. And while I've managed to distance myself from most of them, his mother remains a constant source of irritation. His older sister, Diane, is another challenge. She's been a bit of a nuisance relying on my husband for financial support, just to sustain her unemployed husband and three children. Diane went to great lengths to disrupt our wedding because she feared the regular financial assistance would come to an end. She attempted to sabotage our big day by spilling ketchup on my dress, hiding our wedding license, and even stealing the rings. So when confronted, she put on a show, crying and wailing until my husband promised that the money would keep flowing. Financially, we weren't struggling. My husband has a stable, well-paying job, our mortgage is taken care of, and we have plenty of disposable income. Additionally, I'm an experienced property lawyer with a roster of top clients. It just feels bizarre that we're financially supporting two capable adults who could easily contribute through work. Dealing with family dynamics can indeed be a roller coaster, so this is just the only unusual family situation. It's not the only one, though. His younger brother, Thomas, is also, well, without a job. He vanishes for months and then shows up unannounced at our doorstep seeking food and shelter. He stays for weeks and then disappears again. I've expressed to my husband that unless Thomas is working for the Secret Service, his unpredictable movement seems suspicious, and I'd rather not have him around us. Naturally, this sparked a heated argument within his family, with his mother going along to, you know... Uh, attempt to sever ties with their family. I can confidently state that my husband goes above and beyond and makes up for the challenges posed by his family. However, there are times when even his efforts fall short, especially when his mother Carla's in the picture. He organizes vacations that she seems too extravagant, purchases gifts that Diane considers unnecessary, and lends a hand around the house when our hired help is unavailable. Trust me, she complains about how it's not traditional to have yeah, assistance, and yes, she believes it's not his responsibility to help out with our kids. I may come across as stern when describing them, but guys, their actions have driven me to this point. My initial conflict with them began with the sisters' antics at our wedding and continued through our honeymoon. My mother-in-law took issue with our flight tickets to Santorini, complaining that the money could have been better used for my sister-in-law's children's college fund. She went on about it for hours, not even holding back at our wedding reception, which ended up ruining our first dance. The trouble did not stop there. They all collectively just straight up disapproved of our expensive rings and suggested my husband pawns them after the wedding and gets replicas. When I declined, they lectured me on the importance of saving money for a rainy day. 
It later came to light that they grew up with very little, and now my husband is the sole provider for the family. Unfortunately, instead of being supportive, it seems like they're taking advantage of him, draining him like leeches, and after returning from our honeymoon, my mother-in-law started preparing meals for two and bringing them to our home on weekends. Strangely, these meals were only enough for her and my husband, and she would not let me share with him. She claimed that he was getting too slim after the wedding and wanted to fatten him up by feeding him herself. Well, I knew this was untrue because my husband actually started hitting the gym to shed some extra weight. When I confronted her about it, she just straight up burst into tears, expressing how lonely she felt without anybody for support. So, despite living in the same house with my sister-in-law and her husband, she then fabricated a story about having dementia and wanting to spend her last days with her grandchildren in our home. However, it did not take long for her to abandon the Dementia Act and return to her nosy, intrusive self. This wasn't your stereotypical elderly woman. She had a knack for poking her nose into everything. She would eavesdrop on our private moments and conversations, making all sorts of jokes about them. So, the next morning, her troublesome behavior extended beyond our home. She caused enough issues in the neighborhood that the residents, particularly the elderly, refused to let her into their homes due to their involvement in, well, her petty theft. Her latest pastime involves prying into my work conversations, snooping through my documents and reading my work diaries just to gather tidbits on her friends. Well, anyways, I've overheard her cracking jokes with her equally nosy friends about it, <sighs> especially Rose. Rose was talked to about individuals we perceive as wealthy and privileged in society running into debt and evading taxes, leaving them in millions of dollars of debt. I can't shake the feeling that she's referring to my clients. What's up, everybody? Mr. Reddito here. So we have a nightmare mother-in-law story, guys, and I'm just going to let you know. Things are about to absolutely blow up. Guys, if you aren't subscribed to the channel, just know that it does help support it a lot, and I would really appreciate if you enjoy these videos to go ahead and click that subscribe button. Guys, here's your first update, and yes, it is action-packed. Update number one. I didn't expect my story to gain so much attention, with numerous people getting interested. I've gone through all the comments and will be responding to them in this update. To the lady who mentioned having great in-laws, I'm genuinely happy for you. As, you know, that has been my hope too. I wish things could turn around and they could change for the better. As for the suggestion that my mother-in-law might have some mental health issues due to her age, I must clarify that she does not. We've taken her for various testings and she's passed every one of them. I want to be crystal clear, I'm not passing judgment on her. When she initially claimed to have dementia, I had a top-notch doctor assess her, and they all confirmed that she was perfectly fine. I went to a step further and had her assessed for other conditions, and the results still indicated that she was fine. Despite this, she persisted in believing that something was wrong with her. So, I recommended therapy. But she attended only two sessions before quitting. Her reason for stopping was that she wanted somebody as old as her, with similar life experience, and the therapist I arranged was simply too young. Well, that's according to her, of course. So believe me when I say that my husband and I have uh, put our best efforts in. Another person cautioned me to be very careful around her, just to avoid legal trouble, but unfortunately, she has already caused a situation that landed me in legal issues. So I do apologize for pouring out so much to you guys. But the pain is overwhelming and I just needed to share it. A big thank you to the last commenter for grasping the craziness of the situation. I would not have a problem with it if it was a one-time thing or if her friend Rose would keep the information within the family. See, I have an elderly mother who enjoys reading my work diary during her leisurely time. She does so just to discuss the cases with me and she aspires to become a lawyer herself. However, Rose has no interest in becoming a lawyer or a journalist. Instead, she just seems to act as the community gossip queen. Rose used to work in daycare, but retired since her only child is now financially stable. Enough to support her. She runs a mini blog on Facebook where she provides detailed lists of community happenings for other baby boomers. The list covers a wide range of topics. 
from a woman recently getting divorced after 40 years of marriage to the old banker downtown with the whole family outside his marriage. Her method of gathering information involves prying herself or relying on older individuals like Diane to provide her with juicy stories that they've collected. This aspect made me uneasy about Carla sharing details from my work diary with her. However, instead of empathizing with my concerns, she starts throwing tantrums and accusing me of being controlling, claiming that she has no freedom. She even invited my sister-in-law over to join in criticizing me. When I refused to tolerate their behavior, I spoke my mind bluntly, which hurt them deeply. But I was resolute. I simply did not want them snooping around. I'd hoped that she would seize after I confronted her, but I was mistaken. One day after returning home from work, well, I overheard a conversation in the living area. They were discussing a client of mine who fell victim to a scam, buying disputed land on the brink of losing his only home in old age. Carla and Rose spoke about him with a callous and unwarranted tone, full of scorn. It infuriated me and I stormed into the living room, giving both of them a piece of my mind. I sternly warned them never to discuss my clients in such a scornful manner again. Well, and specifically cautioned Carla to keep away from my work diary. I'm still baffled about how she consistently found it every time I hit it, but I could not care less. All I wanted was for her to stop reading our and discussing my clients. Rose gets upset and left. They got discovered another platform to continue discussing my clients. It was Rose's blog. Update number two. Hey, I received an extremely angry message from my client and its contents left me deeply shaken. She threatened to sue me for a breach of client confidentiality with the intention of ensuring that I lost my license. I had initially connected uh, with this client through a referral from a friend's law firm and her case was quite unique as the sole working partner in her marriage she entrusted her husband with certain financial responsibilities including the payment of taxes for their mansion unbeknownst to her he was gambling away the money and accumulating debts in her name last year he decided to initiate a divorce despite their prenuptial agreement, stipulating that he would not receive half of the properties. He then left the state while waiting for the divorce to be finalized. So, a few months ago, the IRS informed her that the properties would be seized if she did not settle her debts, which amounted to thousands of dollars. My friend's lawyer's firm is just handling her divorce, and upon learning about this crucial detail, he decided to share it with me. I was taken back by her sudden outburst and pleaded with her to calm down. I couldn't understand what she was accusing me of because I've never discussed my clients even with other lawyers, unless I needed second opinions, of course. So I suggested that she meets with me at my office so we could talk about her concerns. But she flat out refused, stating that she intended to hire another litigator to sue me. It's crucial to understand that she belongs to the higher class thanks to her old money, family, and influential connections. If she decides to proceed with the lawsuit, there's a risk of me losing my license. I truly tried not to entertain the thought that Diane might be involved because I did not want to come across as constantly accusing her of harboring disdain. However, out of curiosity, I decide to check Rose's blog, which obviously has been renamed Rose and Carla's Life Talk. To my surprise, the pinned messages prominently featured a picture of my client. The image is etched in my memory, and it left me utterly surprised, and it quotes, Middle-aged women amidst divorce and property battle with their ex-husband. Do you think she's at fault? Read more here. Then a link directed me to a website that provided exhausted details about my client, revealing her identity and the specifics of her situation. It did not stop there, though. They went on to upload various pictures of my clients at different stages of her life. And to make matters worse, it became the most engaged post on the blog. Several other blogs picked up on the story, each presenting different versions uh, that portrayed my client as a fallen high-class woman. Wow. The shock and stress of everything overwhelmed me to the point that I fainted. As I laid unconscious, I did not wake up again. 
I was just terrified of the potential repercussions from my client, and I was equally frightened by the thoughts that I might, you know, what I might do to my mother-in-law. I woke up on the couch with my husband and mother-in-law hovering above me. I wanted to pull her hair and twist it off her skull, but I just managed to keep my cool. My husband questioned me on why I fainted while giving me the cold water from a glass. So I calmly told him to please drive me down to my client's mansion so I could clear the air. Clear the air on what? He asked as we drove off towards her home located in a gated estate just outside town. It was a tussle trying to get in as she refused to let the security open the gate to us. After what seemed like hours, my husband was able to contact a friend living in the estate. They allowed us in. I had her uh, files and my work diary clutched to my chest and finally released it. So I, you know, could check for the address. It was so close to the main gate and stood out due to its mid-century design. I rang the bell and to my surprise, she let me in. I quickly apologized for what happened and began explaining the situation of things. The litigator that she had enlisted represented her in court, was present and insisted on pursuing charges. He contended that my actions jeopardized his client's mental health, asserting that her phone had been flooded with calls from concerned well-wishers, triggering her anxiety. Being familiar with legal terminology, I understood the potential consequences that I might face. Despite noticing my husband's evident fear, I chose to overlook it. Considering the fact that his mother played a role in landing us in this situation. So, we spent hours at the mansion trying to resolve everything. And eventually we came to an agreement. The only condition for her to drop the charges was if I could get my mother-in-law and Rose to issue a public apology. Admitting that they had spread false information solely for the sake of gaining attention. And I agreed to well, represent her pro bono at the trial for free. It was going to be a challenging event, but I simply knew what I had to do. So I'll update you guys when I figure it out. Update number three. Hey, I set up a meeting with John, Carla, Rose, Diane, and Thomas, and to my surprise, they all came. My husband and I laid out the situation and discussed the necessary steps to fix the problem. Their responses were a mix of everything and nothing, but surprisingly, my sister-in-law understood my perspective. She distanced herself from Rose and Carla, expressing concern that if we lost our jobs, we would not be able to support them with their bills. So I convinced Rose to delete the blog post by threatening her with arrest in prison time. Well, she complied immediately. Then I persuaded both Rose and Carla to record a joint video apologizing for spreading false news to just attract traffic to their page. It took some effort and time, but they eventually agreed. As a result, they lost a significant number of followers, and many people advised my clients to sue them. However, my client decided against it and instead issued a public warning to my mother-in-law Rose and the other bloggers who had shared this story. Meanwhile, my husband hired a tech expert to thoroughly remove the story and any traces from social media, just to prevent it from resurfacing. In addition to this, I represented my client in court. She won her case against her ex-husband, transferring the debt to him. I mean, it was a huge relief for me, as I had dreaded the possibility of losing the case in court. Word got out at the bar about the real incident, and as a result, I was placed on probation. Fortunately, it was just a warning for me to exercise more caution in handling the client's confidentiality, especially when dealing with high-class individuals. This marked the first blemish of my 10-year career, all thanks to the mother-in-law and her friends. I was eager to move on from this, but I sternly advised her friend to stay away from our house and focus on her own life. I also harbored a strong desire to hold Carla accountable for all the pain that she has caused. Update number four. This could likely be the final update of my story. A heartfelt thank you for everybody who's been following my journey and acting as a mini therapist. I genuinely do appreciate everyone. I'll be sharing the specifics of how I dealt with my mother-in-law for what she did to me when this realization struck me. My incredible husband, in light of the mandatory leave and the insults I faced during the case, decided to make up for it by organizing a family trip for us and our two kids. We even began discussing possibilities of adding one more child to our family, a dream that we've had before we even tied the knot. Our destination was the Maldives, followed by Dubai for a business associate's wedding. However, Carla attempted to blackmail us, 
hoping to secure an invitation to join us. Unfazed, we stuck to our decision and she was not going to be a part of our travel plans. The time spent on the beaches and the Maldives was fantastic. We explored various tourist attractions with the children. As originally scheduled, we headed to Dubai for a friend's wedding. We decided to cut the short trip short because I received a call to reclaim my license. So, when we returned home, we were shocked to discover that Carla has been throwing parties at our place and inviting her friends over. The house was a complete disaster. With our wedding frame shattered and top it off, we found Rose in a compromising position with her old biker boyfriend on our bed. Carla was passed out drunk on the couch. So, let's add to the chaos. We realized that they had left our front door absolutely wide open, leaving us vulnerable to potential burglars. The TV screen was smashed, the kitchen was a disaster, and we even received a fine from the estate guards for disturbing the peace. This was the final straw for me, breaking the already shattered camel's back, so my kids kept asking if their grandma was behind the chaos, and with a heavy heart I had to admit that it was true. I decided to amplify her punishment for this outrageous behavior. I called in my domestic workers to clean up the entire place before we returned. Our family had to turn around and spend the nights in a hotel because of the extent of the mess. Shockingly, Carla saw nothing wrong with what she's done, shamelessly justifying her actions by saying she wanted to have fun since we had gone out to enjoy ourselves in another country. Over time, she continued to bring her friends over, turning my home into a mess and causing a lot of, well, noise. So, a neighbor reached out to me and discussed how to address the issues with my mother-in-law. She suggested that her recent behaviors might be attributed to old age and informed me about a place in Europe where elderly individuals can go um, for respite. They offer food, shelter, clothing, and even therapy at a very affordable price. People could stay temporary or even live there for an extended period of time. So, to validate this information, I contacted a friend living in Europe. She confirmed the legitimacy of the place and offered to assist us with all the necessary paperwork. Initially, my husband was hesitant about letting my mother-in-law go, expressing strong opposition. He was concerned that they might not take good care of her, and, well, he doubted the authenticity of the positive reviews. He even accused me of harboring a lot ill feelings towards his mother and wanted to send her away to an unknown place permanently. However, when Carla threw another disruptive party, he was willing to have her out of the house at any cost. He decided to personally contact my acquaintances and ask for help for us to complete all the paperwork for the trip. The next challenge was convincing my mother-in-law to agree. She was adamant about staying under our roof despite causing trouble with Rose. Initially, I took a tough stance and uh, threatened her, but she remained unmoved, so I decided to approach the situation with a calm demeanor. I told her about the perks of the place, painting a picture of all-night parties, unlimited talk time, and even suggested that Rose might want to join her once she leaves. Obviously, I exaggerated about the unlimited music and movies and mentioned that there was no rules at this place. It felt a bit deceitful, of course, but I knew I had to do whatever it took to restore peace and sanity to my household. On the day that she was set to depart, she wore a pink floral dress and heels, letting all her friends know that she had been back in two weeks, just as I informed her she would be. She excitedly told them about her all-expense-paid vacation to have a good time away from her, quote, grumpy daughter-in-law. She left uh, for her morning flight, just assuring everyone that she'd be back soon and even playfully mentioned bringing home a boyfriend, to which I chuckled. I had uh, briefed her on what to say at the airport, including explaining to anybody who asked about the absence of her return ticket that her son would be purchasing it later. She boarded her flight and we arranged for a representative of the place that she was heading to to meet at the airport. So, she called last night and I could sense that she was really, really upset. Yep, she kept complaining about now uh, being allowed uh, to not drink. Well, or no parties. Instead, she's getting herbal tea and lectures. She said she could not wait to come back in a week and I told my husband to let her know that she would be returning for six months. And we also restricted access to her bank account to prevent her from buying a return ticket without our knowledge. So, we encouraged her to stay and make friends. But most importantly, to use this time to become a better person. It felt like a weight was lifted off our shoulders to finally have her away from us. 
all the drama and chaos was finally over. I know she won't like it, but it's my small revenge for what she almost cost us. The peace and sanctity of our own home afterwards, and my husband and I, for once, had some peace and quiet. She also began exploring things that we would not originally have the opportunity to do, with mother around. We also witnessed an increase in our disposable income, as we did not need to pay off fines and unnecessary pubs and bars. My mother also came over to spend time with us. She's been really good help around the house, and... I also have been able to monitor her health myself and get my family doctor to check up on her. Don't get me wrong, I'm not biased against my mom because she can also be a handful on some occasions. I find that I'm happier these days. My health, it's been stable, and my skin is just feeling shiny. I'm settled now. I've had some tough luck with my in-laws, but my husband has always been there to support me. Even when others label him as a pushover, he never stops caring for me, showering me with love and attention. He treats our children equally, and I'm grateful to have such an amazing husband. Especially since my relationship with my own father isn't great. So, I still keep in touch with my sister-in-law, who decided to get a job after the incident with the blog. She reached out to me for help filing for divorce from her deadbeat husband. He cheated throughout their marriage and even started dipping into the college fund my husband had set aside for their kid. My sister-in-law has taken a positive turn, and Clara appears to be having a hard time adjusting well in the care center. So, on the other hand, my brother-in-law continues to make poor decisions. Making choices like these can be difficult most of the time, but I wanted the change, and believe me, it was worth it. Alright guys, I do want to talk about this story, and what OP went through with the mother-in-law, but I did see some comments that was saying, Taking OP's mother-in-law to a retirement home and lying to her about what it really was in a whole nother foreign country and she's not able to return ticket because she doesn't have the money is cruel. I do want to run that by you. Do you guys believe that was cruel? Even though everything OP was going through, I still want to know your thoughts on it. So let's talk about it down below in the comment section, guys. This story was wild. I mean... I would hate to be in OP's position and possibly lose your license over this. Anyways, guys, let's discuss it. My name's Mr. Reddito. I narrate stories like this every single day. I hope you guys enjoy it, and if you want more videos, the easiest way is to subscribe to the channel. Guys, have a fantastic day. Anything you're trying to accomplish today, just go do it. I believe in you. And of course, remember, it's cool to be kind. See ya.